Jesse. Praise the Lord. Welcome. Friday night. Amen. Excited. Excited to be a part of the kingdom of God. Thankful that God has given us a place we can worship Him. Spirit and in truth. Did you know one thing? That Spirit So, though we can come together on a Friday or a Saturday, we can worship in spirit and truth any day of the week. While our spirits are with God, our bodies are on earth. And so, though we can worship in spirit anywhere we're at, we still have a place to gather as a body brought together in one and where our feet head, uh, the soil underneath of us. Uh, come together in unity. Unity is something we must never lose. So we get to come together in the name of the Lord. We must maintain unity, no matter what. The we are literally family. That's what we do. We gather together. Hey, thus the Lord has set aside to himself and set it aside. Rest with Sabbath. Sabbath. Friday that Friday evening. Him. Saturday morning, 11 a.m., live stream. I can watch our, our service. Again, miss something, 
on there. That's the having some board, archive things, and bring them up later. That's the that's a great have. That's how we're able. Well, not going to do. I want to get right into what I'm going to talk about. Really, just my heart. We have different ways to give. Cash app option, an art. PayPal option. Pounds. Of course, at their own domains, but you can access those website www.revivalcenter.com. Check out to this ministry or the Revival Center. The bank will understand that. The bank will know. Person talked about. At a meeting. We have building fun buckets to my left and to my right. That helps. Bills going up in price. Bill, gas bill. Part of that's inflation. Cost to keep lights on. Continue to remain a church. And uh, driving, driving. That's what we have. We self sustain by we. from the ark. But it's all the Lord. Power to give. Go and get Cause. If, uh, Part is to have finance. Father, open. They're straight. And the food. Unbroken. Mighty name of Christ, let the blessing of Isaac. Your people. Be upon these everyone said much line. And I think that's about it. What to Rid of that now. And it's it's going to be more than just talking. Nothing. I have questions there were told. Answer them out loud if we have it that's but it's gonna to talk to you from my heart. About the intersection of politics, section of politics, to bring up, and I didn't give proverbs of all right. On Jesus Christ's name, our 
technical issues will be fixed. This is a famous, all scripture's famous, but this one is one that stuck out to me. Uh, when I was just a, a wee lad starting to read the Bible, Proverbs, the 14th chapter, 34th verse. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Now jump over to Proverbs 29 and 2. Twenty nine and two. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. So Lord, have your way tonight. Word. Talk to your people. Help it to be clear, understandable. God, communicate your truth to your people this evening. Let them be taught in Jesus Christ's name. Everyone said amen. Two of my favorite passages in dealing with the state of a, a nation or a group of people. It could be a town. It could be a county. But it's a group of people. In our society, we group ourselves into these clusters of population. We live in a small town, Peru, Indiana. Um, there, of course, are larger cities. But a city is a group of people with resources that come together for the common good of that city and one another to get wealth, to live, to make uh, begin their family. And you know what causes cities to go is, is the economy. And those things are important. People working, that's important. Um, a few years ago, we were hearing all over the mainstream news about job problems. And when uh, there aren't many people employed. There's not a lot of commerce going around and not a lot of wealth being generated. But it has to come from somewhere. So it was printed like crazy. Then you, you see what happens now. Our dollar is devalued because of the excess printing of money and other, a few other reasons. And so that affects everyone. Now, what, what am I uh, talking about? This sounds like an economics or uh, government or something, but it's not. But I believe that, uh, this is me, I believe that the uh, church was always in the will of God when it influenced the people and the government. Now, I know I'm going to, uh, some people don't agree with that. They take the scripture that says, Jesus said, uh, you're, you're in the world, but you're not of it. Take it to an extreme level and say, well, we're supposed to just be completely removed from um, the whole system. Now, if we were anything other than what we have, which is a constitutional republic, that's what we were founded as, or uh, a representative republic or a representative democracy, the democracy part being that the majority of votes on a certain thing, what becomes a law, what the, uh, what becomes a statute or an ordinance. And so that's the democratic part. We have a vote in it. If we were anything other than uh, this, 
life would be different for us. We, uh, if we were under a monarchy, of course, there would be a king or an emperor or <coughs> some other form of royalty that had sole authority to govern subjects. Ancient Israel had a king, King David, King Solomon, all the way up to captivity. Judah had kings as well. And if we lived under communist or a fascist uh, dictatorship or a military junta, life would be different then as well. In fact, not much difference between a monarchy and a, and a communist dictatorship, or they're both authoritarian. Now we need authority. We do need authority, and this is why I'm talking to you uh, tonight. We, we do need authority. We do need to be governed. There has to be order. Government was set up by God. The first government in the earth was the one he gave Adam dominion over the earth. To govern according to the word of the Lord, the voice of the Lord, the way of the Lord. Not according to his own will, but we know what happened. They got things turned upside down, went haywire. Someone else became the governor of this world. And so every kingdom, every uh, government after unless it was by the hand of the Lord, has that influence. I'm talking about the serpent's influence or the devil's influence. And if you study history and even modern history and today, you will see a lot of those characteristics played out in the government. Why is there corruption in government? Because of the influence of the devil. Why do politicians lie, 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 lie? The influence of the devil. Someone said money. The love of money is the root of all evil. Right? Jesus said where your treasure is, that's where your heart's going to be. Heart and money, the love of it, are connected. Notice uh, people who money or cash flow interrupted who are out selling substances on the street. If that gets interrupted and they know who it is, it's going to be hell to pay, right? I say that, not to be vulgar, but they will, influenced by hell, make whoever affected their cash flow pay. Now you got gangs killing each other in large cities and The love of money is growing evil. That's the part of it is money. What has always driven the governments of men? Land, resources, power. That's why we've had so many nations and civilizations across the seven continents subjugating other people under them. Putting them in slavery, raping, murdering, pillaging. Because they're influenced by the enemy. When we declared our independence, it was after many years of a form of tyranny by the monarchy that was governing the colonies. Now, you say, well, maybe that wasn't so bad. Um, life in England before the pilgrims came here was pretty rough if you were a Bible-believing, spirit-filled believer. The man who uh, translated William Tyndale, translated the Bible into English, was burned at the stake 
because he translated the Bible to English. John Bunyan, the writer of Pilgrim's Progress, thrown in prison, it was not a popular thing to be a part of Christianity. So, here come the pilgrims who established a new place they could worship freely. And then, fast forward, all the other things enter in. Some men started loving money. And then what happened? Evil was evil things happened. But there were always a core group of Christians who had right motives, right reasons, did not follow customs, uh, the ways of the day, and some of the institutions they even decried. Did you know that slavery, although it was legal in other places in the Plymouth Colony in Massachusetts, was illegal? Your history on that. Pilgrims, a lot of them were spirit-filled. They weren't perfect. They were Sabbath keepers. In fact, for to go to Jamestown Settlement today, Still on the wall in that church that's there, uh, from when it was a settlement, right on the wall, written in Old English, is Acts 2 and 38. Now, how is that? They were Bible believing, spirit filled believers, wanted to worship the Lord. Now, tonight we're talking about the intersection of politics and kingdom. How many know that November the 8th we went to the polls and voted? I voted. And I expect you to vote too if you want to care about the uh, the affairs of this nation. You'll vote. We were given a blessing, the form of government that we have been blessed with. This is not a communist dictatorship. This is not a fascist dictatorship. This is. Uh, not at all authoritarian uh, dictatorship. And if it were, then I believe there's a lot of things that were said behind this pulpit that somebody would have come in and hauled me off to prison for, and that happens in other nations. But we have been given a blessing. From the very beginning, God shined down on the United States of America and gave his purpose for this nation. And I believe he set this nation to be a light, a help, to minister to the other nation. God has always, in every age, had a people that would affect the nations around them. Adam was over the nations until he fell. Abraham came in contact with many kings and leaders. And because of Abraham, they were influenced by God. Abraham blessed those kings and those leaders. And I believe God still does the same thing today. Or Jesus wouldn't become the king of kings and lord of lords and the king of all the nations of the world. And there is coming a day when the kingdom is manifest fully. But right now, since the kingdom is in you, you have the influence that Jesus has given you, like he had, to affect the nations around you. And that includes, I use the word politics. What is politics? If you look up the definition. Politics, people think it just has to do with the way our government runs. The word politics literally means uh, using political means. This is my definition, but it's based off the actual definition. Using these uh, political means to get your own way. You're politicking. 
You're manipulating, you're influencing to get something that's favorable to what you want. That's what happens on both sides of the aisle in Congress and Senate. Red side, blue side, left side, right side, Republican, Democrat, whatever. They influence to get what they want. A lot of times what they want is not the best for a nation. In our text, in Proverbs 14, 34, and these are just my first thoughts, and I wanted to share them since we've just come through a voting uh, time, and <coughs> many people are obviously upset, although I think we did a lot better than we're given credit for, okay? When I say we, I mean uh, we want leaders that follow more uh, godly principle. We want leaders who are originalists. That will be uh, in line with our Constitution and Bill of Rights and our founding documents. And I do believe that the Lord had a hand in establishing those founding documents. You can find the Ten Commandments in the Bill of Rights. As those are the first ten amendments to the Constitution. Find the Ten Commandments in the Constitution. In the Declaration of Independence. We were given a nation. That's why we're to take care of it. We were given a nation. To uh, bless each other, bless the world, bless God. America has given out uh, to the world more missionaries than other nations. Most of the missionaries of the world come from the United States of America. And so I've, I firmly believe that God has a hand in our nation. He has not turned his back on us or we wouldn't be here tonight. God is not done with America. I do believe there's an awakening coming and the pressure may uh, cause a lot of people to look to a higher source of wisdom and look for an answer. But there's an awakening coming and it's happening all over. And why should you be invested in this? In our text in Proverbs 14, you believe the Bible for what it says. Righteousness exalts a sin is a reproach to anyone. Now, when you read a scripture like this, a lot of people will say, well, we have the right to believe what we want, when we want, do what we want. You, don't, you can't tell us uh, what to do. You can't tell us what to believe, and that's true. You have your own choice. And we were given that choice by God, and it's protected by the form of government that we are under. You know, law is a protective measure for the lawbreaker and the law keeper works both ways but if we believe that God is still involved in the United States of America personally do and we look to the Bible for our answers and we know the voice of God is not going to contradict scripture you got to believe, you must admit that righteousness exalting a nation is a good thing. And so, because of that, and we're given authority and a vote, try to influence the affairs of our nation. Why we support candidates that uphold biblical values. It's not just for us. And anyone out there watching who's an unbeliever who thinks that uh, we're trying to shed, uh, shove our, our beliefs down your throat. We just believe the word of God that says righteousness will exalt this nation 
But if we're in sin, it will be a reproach. And I believe if there weren't believers, kingdom people in this nation would be far different. In our next text, Proverbs 29 and 2. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. How many times have you seen in your lifetime when there's a bad politician in office that affects uh, where your influence is and where you live, comes up with a bad law and say it gets uh, passed and it affects you negatively? How many times has that happened across this nation? We are blessed and privileged to live in state that tries, even in our government, uh, to stick closer to biblical values than some others. It's not a Republican and Democrat thing, but if I, I want to say this. If you read the Democrat Party platform, and you know what that entails, and if you think you're a Christian, and you can believe that, and you can vote for that, that's between you and God. But being a pastor and being a Christian, I can't vote for that. And so I'm going to lean towards, we've already voted in the midterms, I'm going to lean towards the side that portrays and conveys and projects more biblical values. And it's not just for my own good, it's for the whole state. What affects me affects you. We believe this word is true. We don't have righteousness in the land. What do we have? We have reproach. And if I'm a child of God and I'm in reproach, I'm living below my identity. And I don't want to wish that on anyone else. I don't want them to live in reproach. So that's why we do what we do and we try to uh, influence what goes on in our government? Because we don't want to reproach on our state. We don't want to reproach on our city, our town, our county, or our nation. We know that righteousness exalts. It helps. It brings up a nation. I believe uh, the rise of the United States of America was due to it's faith and worship in the one true God. Now, America has not always been perfect. Yes, we have had slavery. Yes, we've had some terrible laws and terrible leaders. But that wasn't the majority. And if God doesn't, if you were as a Christian and God I wanted you to just go off and hide in a cave somewhere. What good would that do the world around you? Well, I believe that we are to influence the affairs and what goes on. Why we vote. Wisest man on the planet, time of his life, uh, believed to be King Solomon. Proverbs 29 and 2, righteousness, when, righteous, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. You see a lot of wickedness going around. A lot of wickedness in city council. A lot of wickedness in mayor's offices. Governor's mansion. Look at all the scandals. The absolute power corrupts. Well, no power is absolute unless it's God's. But power that is not held wisely, that is not uh, seen through the eyes of wisdom, or you, wisdom is not used with it, its implementation is absolutely corruptible. So you see the corruption going on. 
See, liars lying. They lie to your face and then tell you they're not lying. And then they put it on TV and say it's true. This is the fruit of the wicked bearing rule, causing a mourning. When do you mourn? There's a loss where something dies. There's been a lot of mourning going on because people have looked and seen the nation dying. And it is my firm belief that the only hope this nation has are its people that are the people of God in it. And God is the hope of the people. Why, I encourage. If you're, a, if, your life is a, if you're able to handle it, it's the will of God for your life, run for public office if you're a Christian. Run for public office. We're not supposed, I don't believe we're supposed to back down and just stand back. Do nothing. Because I'm looking at a lot of mourning, a lot of death, a lot of disappointment, and you're going to have that with human beings. But I'm also looking at a lot of church folk who are afraid to stand up and do something about it. If my life permitted it and, and I could do it and it was the will of God, I'd run for Congress. I used to tell people if I were ever president, they would have me assassinated. They would hate the way I <laughs> was president. And I'm not president, obviously. Pastor. God had a different plan for my life. But if that's your calling in life, have influence. Go run for public office. We need righteous people in authority that are going to make it so the people can rejoice. Bring joy and bring healing to the community. Just imagine if we had a spirit-filled mayor. You would notice a difference and a change from the top down. Imagine if we had judges on the uh, federal courts and in the county courts and different places that are spirit-filled. Can you imagine the difference we would see? Throughout the history of the church and even in the Old Testament, many uh, well-known notable figures had influence in the governments of their day. Philippians 4 and 22, Paul speaks of a church in Caesar's house. If you were to study history and, and church, first century church history, you would find out that there was a church in Nero Caesar, Claudius Caesar's, in fact, it was Nero's Caesar's wife who became saved, and many people in the household and in the in the the servants and whatever the structure of the house was in those days uh, were converted to Christianity. Now, eventually, we know how Nero was. He was a despot. Had Paul murdered, martyred, and many. Murdered and martyred, and he was a lying, relating, devil-driven man. But in his household, with his wife, and by the way, if you were to study that, he ended up uh, getting rid of her because of her Christian faith and then having her killed too. Nero's household, there was a church of body of believers in the house. Now, history doesn't tell us that Nero converted, but imagine influence. Every day, Nero wakes up. His wife is not acting like a Roman anymore. She's acting like a Christian. 
and she's listening to this man, Paul, who's shut up in a house prison, who Nero can't find any reason to execute him or kill him lawfully, but he has all this influence, and he's got this strange power that's greater than the Roman God's power and the, the gods of the people. But he's so full of love and joy, and he has authority, and now it's spreading throughout Nero's household can't do anything about it because of this. And that was an apostle. Now, obviously, he was called to go to Rome, where he wrote uh, many of his letters. But notable figures throughout the scriptures have had contact, influence, or were in positions of authority in the governments of their day. I'll just mention a few. Abraham spoke with the Pharaoh, the, the senior leader of the nation of Egypt. How many of us have ever met the senior leader of, of any? But Abraham had influence. He was blessed and he had authority. God shined on his life. And those that ruled the nations around him saw it. Joseph. Joseph held the second highest position in the government of the most powerful nation in the known world at the time. That was a pagan nation that did not worship one true God. They weren't followers of Yahweh. But here's this man of God, from a slave to a servant, to a convict, and now he's on a throne, and now he has authority in a pagan kingdom, doing the will of God, the purpose of God, and it's okay, and God's not saying, Joe, why are you doing that? You're not supposed to mix yourself with those people, but he's in a position of authority. Uh, he was well known. He would walk down the street and they would see, they would see Joseph, common Egyptian who worshipped idols. See Joseph or a, or a person in the royal court. And they could have a good conversation. And here's a man of God and a person who doesn't follow God interacting all because of the influence, the anointing of God on his life. But he had a position of authority, second uh, most powerful man in the world. Elijah called to go to the king. And then in the next generation, his successor, Elisha, has influence in the king himself. This time he's not uh, pointing out his flaws. Now, Elisha is mentoring King Joash. He's involved in the politics, as some would say, of the day. John the Baptist was called to go and talk to Herod. Herod was a, a, a political leader, the, the governor of the land, Paul's influence with the Romans. Bring up Romans chapter 13. I want to show you something. A lot of people use this scripture and they use it to justify doing what the government told you to do. Uh, and to force everyone to get the jab. Okay. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. There is no power but of God. Powers that be are ordained of God. Next uh, verse. We're going through uh, 7. Whosoever therefore resists the power, resists the ordinance of God. They that resist, receive to themselves damnation. You resist the police. 
unlawfully, what do you expect is going to happen? Why this defund the police ridiculousness at all? For rulers are not of terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and you shall have praise of the same next. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But I thought this is pagan Rome. Well, he has a position of authority, and he doesn't do everything correct all the time, but you're supposed to recognize that as a Christian. Now, why is that? So you could influence him to do right. Firmly believe that. I firmly believe that. Be afraid, for he bears not the sword in vain, for he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that does evil. Wherefore, you must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but for conscience sake. Don't just obey the law because you feel like something's going to happen to you if you do. But for your conscience sake, cause, this is a hard one, we don't like this, pay taxes. They are God's ministers attending continually, continually upon this very thing. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom So God is telling the Roman church through the apostle, this is how you are to act towards those unjust Romans. He's not telling them to violate. He's not telling them to violate their conscience, uh, God's ways. That's not what he is saying. I, I'm going to tell you, if, if, if they tell you, if someone tells you, under threat of punishment by the law, you have to violate the ways of God, the word of God, the will of God, and do something contrary to the spirit of God, you resist. You have that right. Because the law of God supersedes any law. But this is not in anything like that. This is just everyday life. So you can have influence cause the place that you are in to prosper better. Bring up First Timothy two and verses one and four and then these are my okay. These are my my personal thoughts, but communicating them to you, hopefully to give you some guidance and you're in. Render there, First uh, Timothy 2, chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. Okay. I exhort, therefore, that first of all supplications and prayers, intercessions and giving of thanks be for all men. For kings and all that are in authority, go back, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, first, who will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. That's the will of God. So being Christians and being lights in this world, being those that uh, lead others to be saved, we go out and we do our civic duty. We vote. We, we mingle in the community so we can influence and bring the light of Jesus Christ into the darkness. 
we were given a nation of people, uh, a form of government where we were self-governed. That's why Abraham Lincoln, and I believe it was the Gettysburg Address, that we'll be a nation of the people, for the people, by the people. He wasn't saying that we would just defy the president, although we've had some terrible presidents. I'll be, I'll be the first to say. But God allowed them to be in office. Whether it was to try you to see how much you could take or to grow something out of you you couldn't otherwise grow because of the pressure put on you, but he allowed them to be in office, just like he allowed Nero and Caesar to be in office. God respects law more than you do. I do. But to be a government for the people and of the people and by the people, you have to be able to govern yourself. Have a self-governing system, you have to govern yourself. That means to hold your passions in check. You can't just do what you want when you feel like it. Have a moral compass, mental fortitude. But our laws, our, our form of government, our constitutional republic was given to a self-governing people. The chaos you see now is because people don't know how to govern themselves. You're given the Spirit of God to govern your affairs. The law of God to govern the choices you make, how you think, what you... You have something that holds it in check. Our nation needs that. You're put in a position to influence. So when, when you need to vote, they say it's to save... It's to save your nation because you know the person who's going to be in office is going to be terrible. They've already said what they're going to do and you have the ability and you have the, the means to affect that so they can't bring the terrible things in. You go vote. I wish someone from this church, and I'm talking to myself, would get with the mayor. We need to make ourselves known to the people. I guarantee you everyone in Rome knew who Paul the Apostle was. Even in their debauchery. Man, so much so that 2,000 years later they hijack apostles religion, tried to uh, take what was God's and Christianity and make their own and then adopt the apostles into that. That's how well known he was, That's why there's St. Peter Basilica in Vatican City. I'm not saying that I agree with Vatican City, I don't. Obviously, the doctrines of the Catholic Church do not, not fully anyway. I'm not going to get into all that, but the apostles of Jesus Christ were so well known by their work and by their work. Still known in day across. And like the Vatican and the Catholic Church latched onto them, pushed their own system of religion. Others do the same. And that's all due to their influence within the government. Where, the, where politics and the kingdom intersect. They're different. We're not politics. We're bringing, we're bringing kingdom principles into the government men where they were always supposed to be. 
God gives you a platform to do that, by all means, go in his will and do that. We're entering, in, we're, we're entering into a season. Things may be a little shaky. I, I don't expect to see people to go peacefully. They don't just lose a leg. Go on their merry way and say, oh, we'll get them next time. You know that don't happen. You've been given this opportunity to influence leaders. I believe this. I firmly believe that there will be Christians who the world doesn't know them, but they'll have influence with effectively. Because God will give them authority and they'll they'll be calling them out. Calling out sin. Elijah like confrontations, influencing them, any leaders being saved and being filled with the Spirit. Coming to faith across the globe. Amen. While we have to be careful and know that, yes, we are in the world, we're not of the world, we're not of a certain system that the world operates under, but God did put it in place. God gives you wisdom uh, to know how to live in that given us wisdom to know how to live and what we should do with the times we're in. Same. All right. Well, being here was a little different tonight. Felt the need things. This is this is this is how I believe. This is my heart. I do believe we need to influence government. I absolutely do. And if you call me a liar, not that anyone here is calling me a liar, I'll say it, I'll tell you your face. I believe the church is designed and the desire of God is for you to, as a church, to influence government. Everybody else does it. Why can't you? I'm not saying to get monetary favors or, or we want righteousness in our nation. We want the people to rejoice. We want peace in our land. We want joy in every household. We want good things, and that's why we that's why we eject, stand up again. Taking of life, shedding of innocent blood. While we stand up for God's definition of marriage, God's definition of a family. While we say there are no other gods, may believe a certain thing, but there's only one God known to you. It's our duty and our responsibility. All right, we'll come back tomorrow at 11 a.m. Uh, certainly love you. We bless you. Thank you. Honor is due. For we are called to be a light, chosen to hold this light. Let's do it boldly. Let's do it in his authority. Let's not hide it. Let's hide our lights under a bushel to be vocal about the king. Vocal about what we believe. You have to know what we believe. You've got to see you live what you believe. In Jesus' name. We'll see you tomorrow at 11 a.m., 10.30's prayer. Um, come early for prayer. Early for prayer. We'll be here early after we get some much-needed rest. <laughs> I've been up since about 2.15 a.m., I work today, so I'm ready to just relax. God bless you. We love you. Good to see you. Shalom.